Hey everybody, welcome back to the Overwatch Project on YouTube, also at overwatchproject.com. In this video, I wanted to talk to you about considering a model of reality only based on modern knowledge. Now, I've done it, and I've done it in length, and a lot of people spend a lot of time on ancient history, things like going through the Bible, or whatever other religious ancient documents, Buddhist documents, the Quran, etc., Sumerian tablets, um, ancient books like the Egyptian Book of the Dead, etc. There's so much ancient history out there. But what if, what would reality, what, what could you conclude about reality if you excluded all the ancient stuff and only based it on as much of a totality of information as you could study about what we know now and only now what current science thinks what the current condition of our knowledge is about our consciousness etc well if you go through many many different sources near-death experiences or just consciousness information in general and all the information we know about reincarnation, that's current knowledge, not based on some trying to decipher what some ancient document might have meant or what were they trying to tell us with this story or what did they really mean in the Sumerian text, etc. Uh, but what we know and now in plain English from a whole bunch of different sources that um, reveals the nature of our reality. Well, I'm going to tell you that uh, I've been giving this some thought, and I've been wanting to make this video for a little while, and the conclusion is that you still come up with a model of reality if you base it on the total knowledge of a, of a simulation or an illusion, a, a reality based on our perception through our physical avatar bodies in our senses that we're plugged into and you still come up with if you honestly look at it a nefarious evil prison reincarnation trap and all you need to know or to have this knowledge is just the current knowledge of our reality you know what's amazing is uh if you think about it, the way people distort what's been done to us, when the forces doing it to us are attributed to a non-human entity. Think about the UFO abduction phenomena. And uh, although I don't, I don't have all the web pages open to what I'm talking about, a lot of people on my channel that subscribe, I hope, know. If not, you can go and look up names and things I'm talking about um, you know like the work of Carla Turner and others or what happens to people in near-death experiences and what people report in out-of-body experiences etc and if you if you think about it like a UFO abduction phenomena the activity that goes on that's regularly described by people um, and this is where people's reasoning is like contaminated with some kind of virus that they can't properly see what's happening. The, if if a human did what it what the actions that take place during a UFO abduction phenomena to another human, they would likely spend the rest of their life in prison. Why? Because it involves kidnapping, false imprisonment, uh, torture. Um, rape and uh, even like um, sort of like slavery if you think about it if people are actually forced to become impregnated or have hybrids etc whatever they describe during those events and yet in general you'll have um, people acting kind of moronic when they uh, when they say well they're here to help us or they're here to enlighten us. And the same thing with near-death experience uh, and other 
out of body experience phenomena. If you think about it, like the uh, the whole gist that you get from this, uh, you can't go forward. You have to go back. We don't get any answers. You're told about a mission that you never told what it is, etc. There's so many clues, and then you have the whole like. And for some reason, Robert Monroe's uh, website has not been coming up today. I'll, uh, I don't know why. Um, but um, it's been down, or at least it's not responding. But, you know, you have the whole louche story from Robert Monroe's Out of Body Experiences, which, in a sense, is, is a, in, in the way it's even worded, you know, someone did or something wanted this garden for a louche. And this whole process of this whole story that he's telling. Actually, when you take a look at the totality information, that story of our reality is the one that seems to fit the best, you know. Our, our, and so you have to wonder, are we a type of farm or something? And, and, um, and the weird thing is, you know, you have a lot of... Um, information about our universe being like a hologram or being like a video game and um and and i want you to think about this how do we know where our history actually begins how do we know what point it actually begins because if you play video games if you play on xbox playstation pc or you're using a your Linux box or whatever to play a video game. If you're playing any kind of uh, role-playing game or a, a first-person shooter or something like that, where you're you're playing through someone's eyes and you're in a, a this virtual world, um, or you're playing some kind of enormously uh, giant multiplayer, uh, massive multiplayer experience type game, or um, no Man's Sky, where you have uh, like a quintillion worlds out there, you realize that, you know, of course, all that fits, all that is is information. It's kind of like what Tom Campbell says. It's, it's all information. And, um, you know, scientists today have been saying that the universe is actually flat, that 3D uh, perception is uh, all, like, formulaic. And you have all these people wasting their time uh, with this, uh, it's interesting to me that the flat Earth crap comes up uh, right after scientists start announcing um, the flat universe theory, which is all part of the simulation theory of reality. Because really, it, it's not about that there's anything really here, it's that we're perceiving it here, right? And that's what science is starting to suggest. Although they're still atheist scientists and they still want you to believe and they've somehow they've deluded themselves to believe that it's a simulation that coded itself by accident. These people are really unbelievably dense. But that's for another video. Uh, I'm just talking about the backstory. If you're playing a video game that you just bought this year and in that video game there are ruins, ancient ruins, you know, and um, they could be thousands of years old, right? But in reality, the video game was just made. It was made within the last few years. So the time inside the game isn't really real, just like physicists tell us our perception of time is kind of illusionary. And when people are in an NDE state, a near-death experience state, or an out-of-body state, they'll describe time as being no longer linear, no longer a line like we're... F like oh my gosh, my phone is talking to me. Anyway, um, what I'm saying is, uh, if you think about it, right... Um, it's not, it's, it's, we don't know where the backstory is. So how do you know all this ancient stuff is really ancient stuff? And it's not just backstory to keep us occupied, to keep us thinking, to keep us 
curious because the whole thing, the whole point here is to make the universe so massive, so huge, that we're spending all our time trying to reach the next star, the closest star, or maybe going out to space. We have this whole uh, propaganda programmed into us for ever about space, the final frontier. But space isn't the final frontier. Consciousness, our non-physical selves, the omniverse is maybe the final frontier. Maybe there's something even beyond that. Who knows? But this space in this universe, this whole universe is just part of a best knowledge that you could model, you can form from the totality of data is that it's all here to keep us ignorant. We're, we're born with amnesia. We have to learn everything from scratch for a very short lifetime. And then we're uh, thrown into death where, where, where our body dies and our non-physical entity is finally released. And um, I'll, get this in, I'll get into amnesia and the whole concept of this one, this bullshit in the next video for my part three of how to escape the prison matrix reincarnation trap. But for right now, I just wanted to bring up this point that, you know, if you only base your, uh, if you're trying to come up with a model of reality and you're only, only basing it on what we know today in modern times, say within the last uh, 50, 60 years, what is known what are what you know from people that were recently alive have been videotaped in interviews or are alive and we are all interacting in this um, knowledge sharing uh, and you can watch their interviews and you can write them emails and you get answers and these are all like real people they're not like people in ancient history that we're still debating whether or not they are or who they, who they were or, you know, what was embellished about them, we know, you know, our current close proximity history the last 50 years or so. But, I mean, in reality, we only know the immediate present that, present that we sense. We don't, we remember the past, and we try to anticipate the future. But, um, and we spend all this time trying to buy time before our bodies eventually have to die anyway. But we don't know exactly anything beyond, you know, for sure, what we know, we, what we can know today. So um, it's interesting to me that if you did, if you excluded all the stuff in the past, and I had to go through this whole process where I, just to, just to vet my own religion that I was born into, I mean, I really had to commit I read the entire Bible cover to cover multiple times, studied it in depth, thousands of hours of research before I deconstructed my religion, my indoctrination, and, you know, freed myself from all that bullshit. And then I was stuck with a mess for a while where I didn't know exactly where it was going to lead me. I had to try to, I wanted to know. I didn't want to believe in things. I wanted to see what I could know. And um, knowing is better because uh, it's very limited because you can know a certain amount about our reality and then the rest is like this a theory and hypothesis game that we can play. And any theory or hypothesis can, that can be supported by the totality of the information that we can know is therefore one possible thing that could be uh, true. And so I have many theories and many hypotheses, but I can know and apply simple uh, common sense. The same things that I would consider criminal or uh, harmful to me, if it was done to me by another human, I can see that if the um, if um, Entities that we don't fully understand because they're non-physical and we only encounter them in out-of-body or near-death phenomena or um, UFO cases, etc. And uh, if, you, if you can only <clears throat> transpose what the, what the actions are of these things to another human and you can see that as criminal, 
it's not hard to process that <clears throat> this reality is not good. It's not good for me individually because it is keeping me prisoner. It's keeping me um, down and ignorant. Uh, I have to struggle and learn and taking me uh, all my life to figure out what, you know, sort of what's going on. And then you're stuck with, okay, now I know that this isn't good. It's a prison. It's a farm. It's some kind of uh, fake reality. <clears throat> this is the dream. The life is somewhere else. And now I have to figure out how to get out of here, which, uh, you know, once my body dies, I'll have an opportunity to escape. Uh, but I got to get it right. So the longer I can stay here, the more knowledge I can gain, the better shot I have of getting out of here. Uh, but that's it for this video. Just a quick point of if you only based your knowledge of reality on modern intel and not in information, you would still be able to process the uh, easily process the knowledge that this is a prison matrix reincarnation trap uh, type of reality. And uh, all these links are actually on my link page right here. Um, so I don't have to put all the links there. I have the whole list here. Now there's ancient links here too, Sumerian text links, all kinds of links that don't have to do with uh, modern stuff. But there, are, but I'd say it's like a, almost like a 50-50 split. But uh, you all are smart enough to um, sort that out. So that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys later. See you. Bye.